So with that, I'd like to move on to our second present presenter, and I'd like to welcome Professor Alan Melcher. This presentation is about immunotherapy, and the session is sponsored by our corporate partners, Thompson's. So welcome, Alan, and thank you for joining us. Alan is a clinician scientist at the Institute of Cancer Research, and um, clinically, he's an, uh, his expertise is with melanoma and head and neck cancer, I believe. And, and head and, and melanoma, from what I understand, was a real trailblazer in terms of our learning and our understanding of using immunotherapy as a clinical intervention. Um, so that's brilliant that you've got that clinical expertise as well. And you're academically studying how to um, activate the immune system to recognize and attack cancer. Um, so this obviously is a, a new area for mesothelioma and we're really glad that you have joined us today um, to give us some insight into immunotherapy. Thank you, Alan. Okay, well, thank you very much and, and thank you for having me um, today. So exactly as Liz said, so I am a doctor and I see patients, but I'm very much interested in immunotherapy across the cancer spectrum. And obviously mesothelioma as a difficult to treat cancer is something that immunotherapy may offer um, opportunities for but we need to know and understand more and I'd like to take you a little bit through that. So what I'm going to do is try and tell you a little bit about what immunotherapy is and what it means then a little bit also about the excitement of current uh, progress which is good but by no means perfect therefore what are the reservations it is not the magic answer to everything um, and we need to understand more where is immunotherapy in mesothelioma? I will be very brief about that because James, who's going to follow me, is going to talk more about what trials and so on is, are going on. And then finally, how do we go forward and how do we do better? So this is a bit, a bit about the science, if you like. So I think one of the best ways of thinking about this is, in fact, when you have cancer, there is a battle going on between the immune system and the cancer as it tries to grow. And this battle sort of goes through these three stages of elimination, equilibrium, and escape. And so at the very beginning, when a cell goes wrong, which is the starting point for cancer, it is basically recognized by the immune system and taken out. And so the immune system is winning the battle, no problem. However, we know that cancer cells change a lot as they grow and as they evolve, a bit like Darwinian evolution. So the cancer starts changing and takes on um, facets, which means that it starts to fight back against the immune system, if you like, becomes invisible. And so they, we set up this sort of balance where the immune system is trying to fight the cancer, but the cancer is changing and starting to shift the balance. And that is so-called equilibrium. And then in the final stages, the actual the cancer becomes so good at hiding from the immune system, and it has to do that if it's going to grow, that it eventually escapes. And in fact, that is when you see the cancer and you get the cancer in the patient. So this can happen over many, many years. But the promise of this battle is it does mean that the immune system can see a cancer and at least in the early stages has the potential to attack and, and, and win a battle. And what immunotherapy is all about is reversing this trend from A to B to C and to try and get back to A, where the immune system is in charge and on top of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in terms of um, what is going on with cancer, don't worry too much about the details of this or indeed other slides. It's the principles I'm trying to get at. So at the bottom here, you've got a tumour as it starts to grow. And you can sort of think of this a bit like a virus infection or indeed any infection. And what happens is that tumours have antigens. And that is exactly the same as a virus or a bacteria. It does have things that the immune system can see. Those antigens then can then get released, recognized and responded to, particularly in the lymph nodes. And if they do get recognized those antigens, for example, if you have a viral infection, you will generate an immune response against those antigens and particular cells, so-called T cells, other types of cells, which are now recognizing this antigen need to travel back in the blood to the place where the infection first started, or in this case, the tumor, and attack. And this is the sort of cycle that we think about in terms of cancer immunotherapy. And I guess the point about it is that it's happening all over the, over the body, all over your system. 
And really a good way to think about it is what a lot of people in, in immunotherapy works by doing is making a cancer look a bit like a virus infection. Because from what I've just told you earlier, cancers are very, very good at hiding from the immune system. They have to do that to evolve. Whereas our immune system is perfectly set up and, and, and developed to recognize a virus. So we have to turn the immune invisible cancer into an immune visible cancer. And that's the whole key to immunotherapy and what these drugs are trying to do. So just on the next slide, again, please don't worry about the, any of those numbers, letters, etc. But all that is doing a list in blue, in, sorry, in the red and the green, at different stages of this process, these are the number of molecules that have been identified to be involved. So if you think of it in terms of um, generating immunotherapy and developing new drugs, these are all the targets that are being worked on to develop new immunotherapy drugs. And the point I'll just make about the red versus the green is the way your immune system works, and this unfortunately is rather relevant in this COVID world that we live in, is it's full of accelerators and brakes. So in green, you have all the accelerators, and in red, you have all the brakes. And it's like a car, it's got to be fine-tuned. So when you get a virus infection, like COVID, you'd have to turn on the accelerators of your immune system to attack all of the green that you see on the slide. But the problem is, if you just do that and you keep your foot down on the gas and keep going, you'll run into all sorts of trouble. So you need brakes as well. So after the accelerator comes on, on come the brakes as well, which are the red molecules that you see here. So your whole immune system, whether it be a virus, whether it be a cancer, is full of accelerators and brakes. And in fact, the problem very much with COVID is the accelerators go on and the brakes don't come on enough. And that's why people get so very, very ill. The problem with cancer is the way it works and it's so clever is that it avoids putting on the accelerators and it's very good at pushing the brakes so that balance and i think a sort of car system is a good way to think of the science and the immunotherapy of the immunotherapy that we are currently using so on this next slide all i'm doing in those little red boxes those are the main drugs that currently work okay these are the blockbuster targets and you know these are the, the drugs you will see all of the time in the press new progress is being made, huge excitement, millions and millions of dollars from drug companies and their investment. But the point being that we are really just at the tip of the iceberg here. There are all of those other targets which know we, we are, people are looking at, but are nowhere near the sort of clinical delivery stage as yet. So we are at the start of a very long, very complicated journey. And the science has to keep up and the trials have to follow. And indeed they are. So what about the current excitement? Um, at the moment, not about mesothelioma, but about other diseases. And in fact, Liz mentioned melanoma. And in fact, this is just shows a graph of the very first melanoma trials, which were only about 15 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago, which showed immunotherapy worked. And there are a couple of points to make about that. One is that this is very recent. And all of those lines show, essentially, the higher the line is, the more people are doing well and surviving. And what you can see, for example, the details don't matter, but on the blue line on the left, when you do well with this immunotherapy, the response rate is about 20%. And if you think about it, that's pretty terrible. However, it is there. And that 20% was a lot better than melanoma treatments at that time, where chemotherapy and really nothing else worked, nothing was shown to work. So it all depends on what you're trying to, to build on. So this really, despite the disappointing numbers in a sense, was a real breakthrough and the first sign that immunotherapy could work. The other really important point to make on this slide, which is very different to other types of cancer treatment, is that if you are one of those fortunate enough to be in the 20% who respond, you can basically live for many, many years. And that is quite different to more standard chemotherapy where for most cancers, and I'm not talking specifically about mesothelioma or anything else, but in most cancers where you give chemotherapy, if you do respond, that is great, but you will not be cured in general. It's all generalizations. But 
Immunotherapy was very different in that if you are, and we now know this, if you are responding to immunotherapy after two or three years, you are very likely going to live many, many more years. And of these people on this slide, in those 20%, these are people who had that treatment 15 years ago and are still fine. So we always use the C word with a great deal of caution, but these people are likely cured. So that is a big um, uh, plus for uh, immunotherapy in the sense that, you know, of course, that is what patients, doctors, that's what we all want, that not just to respond for a while to the treatment that you're having, but potentially to, you know, live a long and full life if the treatment works. So these were the very first stages of where immunotherapy showed a promise in melanoma. And it's moved on a great deal, many, many cancers, many, many diseases, many, many successes, but not everyone, not all cancers, and never 100%, never a magic bullet. But the reason that I've put up this particular one, which is a similar to, to the last slide in the way that, so the, the blue line is people who've had the treatment in a trial, who are doing better relative to the yellow line, which was those who had standard treatment. This was adding immunotherapy to chemotherapy and radiotherapy in lung cancer. And this is just another example where now we're doing better. We're up at around the sort of 50% mark rather than the 20%, but a common cancer, and this is now again come into standard of care um, and, and what many patient, patients are having around the world. And again, perhaps the, the major cancers where immunotherapy has made a huge difference. Melanoma was the start, lung cancer, kidney cancer, the list is growing, but it is by no means everybody. And as I say, even in a promising trial like this, 50% success still leaves a long, long way for potential improvement. So <clears throat> this is just to show you. So those drugs in both of those trials I've just shown you were antibody drugs. Um, they have a lot of different names and here is a long list and by no means complete of the many, many drugs along these lines, which are antibodies being tested across a range of cancers. And just what is quite interesting, these antibodies, they all basically block the brakes in the immune system. They don't push on the accelerators. There are other drugs coming through which are looking to try and push the accelerator to get the balance better. But most of the drugs where we are at the moment block the brakes. So there is a huge amount for us to learn. And what I've written down there for sure is that a key question is we don't really know exactly how these um, drugs work. So for all the clever science and the slide I put up with lots of different molecules, be they red or green, what it actually means when you come in with a drug like an antibody and block it, we don't fully understand. And of course, that is an absolutely critical question in terms of trying to find out who responds and who doesn't? Why do some people do better and some don't? And there are clues about that, and people are working very hard in enormous amounts of research to find so-called biomarkers for these drugs. In other words, things that we can measure before you start treatment, which can predict whether you will or will not respond. But there's a vast amount of work that still needs to be done. <clears throat> so, excuse me, just for an interesting example. Um, slightly bizarrely but if you are a lung cancer patient and you are a you were a smoker so you got your lung cancer likely because of your smoking you respond better to the immunotherapy than if you were a non-smoker so those are the sorts of clues that people are looking to follow up to do intense research to find out across different cancers different people why some people respond but not everybody, and there is plenty of room for improvement. So what are the reservations? Um, it is not a magic bullet, I have said that already, and it doesn't work for everybody. Some of these points I've already made. The other thing to be very honest about is that there are side effects from immunotherapy. It is not um, without its downsides. However, as we learn more, as we get more experience, those side effects become more manageable and they become more treatable. 
And of course, as ever, it's a sort of risk benefit balance. But if with immunotherapy, there is the potential, if you do well, lots of ifs in this sentence, I fully recognize that. But if you do well, you may do very well for a long time, then those side effects become, you know, worth risking and worth managing. But there is this uh, downside that we must all be very conscious of. It is not the answer to everything, the magic bullet with no problems. It does have its downside. The other thing to say is that it's very early days for immunotherapy. This has only been around for 10 to 15 years, as I say. And it's also completely different to all other types of cancer treatment. Although it is a drug, it does not work in the same way as chemotherapy. Um, it's not like radiotherapy, and of course, it's not like surgery. So it has its own rationale, science, and side effects around it. So for example, the slide I showed for the melanoma patients who have done really well and are still alive and well 15 years later, those patients had four treatments only with an antibody drug, and that was it. So, you know, there's, that's a very different world to most of the treatments many people are on for cancer. One injection every three weeks, 12 weeks, and you're done, and you're potentially cured. So that is a different way of thinking about treatment and its ups and downs, and we have to bear that in mind as we move forward. So <coughs> really just one minute on this only, where are we with immunotherapy and mesothelioma? That is what James is going to talk about. Clearly, there is a lot of interest and a lot of, um, in every cancer, immunotherapy is being tried and tested. And again, in mesothelioma, it's relatively early days. And we do not know the answer, I think, is the most honest um, comment to make. There is no drug that is approved and standard and will be given to everybody with mesothelioma in the clinic. And as very often in new cancer treatments, when they are brand new, you tend to see some people who respond and the excitement tends to go up, but then it also tends to come down again as it becomes clearer as more people are treated that it's not the answer to everything. So some of those larger trials as they moved forward were um, negative in people who had already tried chemotherapy. And it may be, and probably that is an overstatement on that slide, um, that well, there are some potentially promising results in one of these bigger trials for initial treatment in mesothelioma, and that's what James is going to talk and fill you in about um, in a moment. Uh, but we need to have optimism, but undoubtedly cautious optimism. And sorry to sound a little downbeat on that basis, but I think one of the things we are battling in my research world is that, you know, the, the, the media excitement around immunotherapy is not as balanced as it should be. And so you get a lot of excitement and a lot of hype and hope, which is not realistic, particularly when it's relatively early days as it is with mesothelioma. So I don't want to say immunotherapy can't work and it won't work. The jury is out and James, I'm sure, will address that a, a little bit further in a moment. So the final bit is just my take for a few minutes of where do we go next and how do we do better? And to be honest, I think mesothelioma shares a great deal with you know these principles in all of the cancers that people are trying to treat with immunotherapy. The first point is absolutely central. We need to understand more. What is happening? How do these drugs really work? Why do people respond sometimes but not always? What is the difference? And to do that, for example, in my center and many others, what we are doing is when trials go forward in any type of cancer, we are collecting as many samples as we can, you know, be it from blood, from biopsies, so we can take those samples back to the lab and try and look at them and understand what is going on. And the, the science behind that is getting ever, ever stronger. Um, and uh, we, you know, the, the assays and all the rest of it uh, are very informative. And if you can look in that depth of analysis and look at people who do do very well if we're in a particular trial relative to those people who don't do so well, you can start to unlock this mystery of what is going on, what is the science really telling us, and how can we help people better. And as we move forward with that sort of information, I think what's becoming quite clear again across the piece is that in quite a lot of cases, combination treatments are better. 
And we've known this in cancer treatment for a very long time. So for example, very often when patients have chemotherapy for all sorts of cancers, they don't get a single drug, they can get a cocktail of drugs. And it's probably the same in immunotherapy. So again, a lot of work and effort going on, not just giving immunotherapy by itself, but giving immunotherapy in combination with chemotherapy or in, even in combination with radiotherapy. And one of the reasons that people are doing this is they're finding out that one of the things that behind immunotherapy is, as I've talked about at the very beginning, is it is key to have an immune response against your cancer to help your immune system cope, manage and uh, attack. And it turns out that there is this concept that, that cancers can either be sorry, immunologically hidden, in other words, so-called cold, or they can be immunologically quite hot, in other words, immunologically visible, but obviously not visible enough. And it turns out that the other treatments that people have, like chemotherapy and radiotherapy, can also heat up the tumour and make them more visible to the immune system. So therefore, these combinations are not just randomly putting things together, but trying to put together rational strategies, where all of which are helping to boost your immune system, help it out, and immunotherapy come in to really give it the kick that it needs to get on top of the cancer and help patients do better. So mesothelioma at the moment is not is early days, as I've said, but some of the markers suggested is relatively cold. It needs help. It is going to be a challenge, uh, but it is not without um, promise. A lot more work is needed. But again, we need to be balanced and reasonable and not expect everything to be um, you know, magically better and targeted with a bullet which unfortunately immunotherapy cannot provide, but it is certainly a now a, you know, a real player in cancer treatment as a whole and needs intense investigation, including in cancers like mesothelioma. And I'll finish there. Thank you very much.